Now, last but not least, we need to take all of that data from the iTunes API and turn it into HTML. Again, I'm going to use the materialize library to make my HTML look nice. Um, I'm going to use a component in here and I'm going to use a card because the cards are just a really easy way to make nice looking HTML without writing any CSS. And I really don't like writing CSS that much. So if someone else does that work for me, perfect. I'm going to use this little card right here because it's cool. It has like a picture and it'll let you scroll up and down. That looks fly. I'm with it. Um, here's how we're going to do it. The first thing we're going to do is because if you look inside this app, under json.results, we have an array of 50 songs. And so I'm going to loop over all of those songs. And then for each song, I'm going to display a card with some information on it. Or it might be a movie or whatever it is. So I'm first going to create a variable that's going to hold all the HTML we're going to put on the page. And I'm going to set it equal to an empty string. So there's nothing inside there yet, but I'm going to put some stuff in there right now. Then I'm going to loop over all of the songs. So for each song in the json.results array, we're going to make them appear on the page. So I'm going to say json.results.for each song, I'm going to run a function. And inside this function, I'm going to add some HTML to the final HTML. I'm going to say final HTML plus equals, which means, hey, stack this on to the end of the final HTML string. And then I'm going to use those funky little back ticks right there. It's right above the tab key. These back ticks allow me to add this to the next line like this. And I can put all the HTML inside these back ticks here. And then I can put a bunch of variables in there too. It just makes my life a lot easier. And so I'm not going to take all this code for the card right there. I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it right inside these back ticks like this. Now this card is just the HTML that makes this. So there's a card title, there's an image, there's a link, there's a little button. And all of those are inside here. So here's the image. That is at the top of the card. Here's the card title. It's like right over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace those words and those images with the data that we saw with the API sending back to us. So in here, if we open up one of the songs, you'll notice that the artist's name is there. You see that? Let's put the artist's name on the card. Now to do that, we named each thing song. We named each of these items in the array, we named it song. So if I want to put Shakira's name in here, I'm just going to delete that A tag that says this is a link. And instead, I'm going to use a dollar sign and an open and close squiggly, which allows us to put variables in here. And I'm going to say song.artist name. Now why am I saying song.artist name? The reason why is because the data in this JSON right here is organized according to a label. So each one of these things in the array, we gave the variable name of song. And so if I say song dot artist name, it finds the information right there and it puts it inside that variable. Song dot artist name. So if I want this artwork right here, what would I put? Song dot what? Artwork URL 100. So in this image right here, in place of the source of the image, I'm going to say song dot, what was it again? Artist artwork. Yeah, my bad. Artwork URL 100, something like that. That sounds right. Artwork URL 100. Yeah, there you go. Um, I also want to put the name of the song, right? What's a track censored name? And so right here where it says card title, I'm going to replace that with song dot, what was it again? Censored. Track censored name, something like that. Cool. Now I'm going to give this div with a class of card some extra information, some extra classes, just so that it looks a little nicer because um, I want them to be displayed in a column. 
And so for each of these things, I'm going to wrap it in another div with a class of column or call, C-O-L. So I'll just come here, I say div class equals call and then S6, M4, or S4, M4, L4. All that means I want it to take four twelfths on a small screen, on a medium screen, and a large screen. I want it to take up four of the total 12 columns. And so then I put one extra ending div down there, and I should be good to go. Now there's some extra information here that I didn't put. I didn't add this yet. I'll, let you, I'll leave that up for you to do later. Um, but the last thing you need to do is give the div with the ID of output a class equals row. And now we should be able to click this and we should watch our app work. Are you ready? So I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna enter the artist in here. I'm gonna type in Shakira and I'm gonna type search. Um, actually, I could, nah, I'll do that in a second. I'm gonna type search and, oh, you know what I didn't do? In the script.js, I didn't say I want the output dot inner HTML to equal the final HTML. And the reason why I'm doing that is because after I've added all of these HTML strings to the final HTML, I want to create the output of the final HTML. I want to put it all inside our page. So I come in here, I click refresh, I type in Shakira, and I click search, and I should see a bunch of Shakira images with her songs pop up here. Shakira, hips don't lie, featuring Y cleft jeans. Whenever, wherever, women to be together. And if you look at each of these, if you click the more vert thing, there, there's some more information I could put in here. And you see how like this close icon is not working? That's because I need to actually include the icons section from font awesome, I mean from um, materialize awesome. Materialize also, excuse me. It's just a little link right there that if you put in the head file of your index.html, it'll add a bunch of nice little icons for you. And so I put that there, I save, and my app should be a fully functional application now at this point. So I type in someone else. Give me another artist to type up. Drake? Okay. So I type in Drake. Here's a bunch of Drake things in my feeling, God's plan. And you see these little, like, things right there? Hotline bling. And if I click on it, now there's, like, a little X thing, too. Um, and you can look up any artist you want and see all of their information and data right um, so you can choose how you want to do this, what information to display. There's so much more information here uh, besides like the collections. Uh, maybe there's a URL that you can go to if you want to go buy the album, uh, whether or not it's streamable, the genre, when it was released, um, if it's explicit or not. You can, you can organize it by which things you want to search up. And Apple actually, the iTunes developer information will actually tell you all the stuff you need to actually make this work. So if you go to the iTunes, what's an affiliate.itunes.apple.com, they'll tell you how to look, all the different things you can look up. You can look up the country, the media. So if you wanna look up only movies on iTunes, podcasts, audiobooks, eBooks, um, you can do that here as well. Different attributes, TV shows, if it's explicit, the language. There's all different kinds of cool things you can do with this, but at this point, this is a working version of an app, and so we should feel pretty good about this. Any questions for me before I wrap this up? Yes, absolutely, my guy. Any other questions? Amazing. Um, so if you need anything else from me, let me know. Otherwise, you have the rest of the period to work. Good luck.